Welcome to another episode of Fire Feast and Friends, the show where we cook outdoors all year round, whatever the weather. I'm here as usual with Pierre and Damien, hey. my trusted sidekicks, and we're out on location yet did again. Did you just say sidekicks? Sidekicks. <laughs> Felt right. Really did. Maybe not sidekicks. Feels like a demotion. <laughs> this evening we're going to cook uh, some trout. It is farmed, it's not wild, uh, but it's easy accessible. We're going to cook it a little bit different this evening. We're cooking. Oh, what is that? You're going to cook it over fire? <laughs> oh, shock! <laughs> so we've um, got the Chapa and the uh, Perea grill on again from Country Fire Kitchen. And um, we've got a nice bed of embers there and we're going to plank cook on the top of it. <gasps> What's plant cooking? You yeah, know? baby, what's that? See, that shut what's you that? up, hasn't that it? Yeah. Shut me up, baby. I love catching him out. He's been like, what? <laughs> so, uh, plant cooking is a fantastic way of controlling the cooking of proteins or fish, or you can cook with vegetables with it. But what's really, really nice is instead of heavily smoking a dish, it subtly smokes it. And it's a really great way of flavouring with the type of wood you're cooking with. So today, can you pass up that plank over there? Sir? Oh! This plank here. As if by magic. Here we've got a cedar plank. These are accessible from all barbecue shops, online and things like that. And cedar is a fantastic North American wood that has this really sort of sweet, piney smell to it, but it's safe oh, it and tastes to cook yeah. with. It smells good, yeah? yeah. Have a smell, Pierre? But it's really good, but that's going to go oh, into wow. the flavour of the food. It smells good, yeah? yeah? Again, the wood becomes part of the flipping recipe. <laughs> it's an ingredient. So what we've done is we've soaked it so as we can control the amount of burn we've got on it. We can move it around. We want it to burn, we want it to smolder, but as it cooks, it's gonna protect the bottom of that fish and allow it to cook a little bit slower. And what we've got are two lovely, as I say, rainbow trouts that we've got just here. And we're gonna flavor these with burnt lemon, dill, fresh parsley, and then serve them with a little couple of other accompaniments that I'm gonna go on to in a bit. But the first thing we need to do once they're gutted is lay them on the planks. So we've got our two fish sat on our planks and it really is this easy. Some people dry them off first. So lay them against fire, dry the top so they don't stick. I'm not worried about there. We're out in the middle of nowhere. I'm not presenting this for the royal family or anything like that. Has he ever mentioned that he cooked for the Queen once? <laughs> but um, we're going to cook this so far and it needs to be a little bit gnarly, a little bit rustic, a little bit interesting. But what I want to do to the trout first is I want to stuff them with a few aromats just to get that flavour going. So, we're going to use some dill inside the fish. Dill and fish are a marriage made in heaven. They work really, really well. It's very classical, but there's a reason it's classical. It's because it works. And I don't want to go. to the... Um... Uh, fennel, fennel tops. Yeah. You are now a fan of fennel, aren't you? Yeah, big time, yeah. Good, we've got no fennel in this dish. <laughs> very, really very sorry. different flavour though. Very different. Yeah. It's great, I love this, but what we're going to do is we're going to... I'm, I'm married to a pole, so we eat a lot of dill. Right. They there we put, go. The poles will put dill with... Everything. Everything. They'd have Literally. it on toast if you let And them. it's really nice with meat. Really, really nice. It shouldn't just be left with fish. So I'm going to stuff the carcass slightly. I'm going to grab a good pinch of salt. in there as well. Now, only last one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score the top of the fish very slightly just to help that heat penetrate through. So you're cutting quite deep there, aren't you? Yeah. I really need to chop my knives. So there we go. So we've got our aromats, we've got our fish ready to go. And I'm just literally going to sit that above the fire. Now what I want to do is bank these embers up a bit. So I need to start getting them burning. Start getting that heat underneath. And the wood will catch. We're not worried about that. We want it to catch. That's a good thing. So we're going to build these up and start the cooking process off. We're not going to rush it. We're going to allow it to do its own thing. And we're just going to let it slowly cook that fish beautifully, making sure it's on the actual board. We want to cook fish realistically to about 48 to 50 degrees. You don't want to overcook fish proteins. If you overcook fish proteins, unfortunately, you're going to get this really hard, chewy, very nice eating experience. Whereas when it's just there, very lovely flakes, flakes moist. Apart. A 
Okay, so the fish has now had about 10, 15 minutes. The gnarliness of that board now is starting to look really cool. But it's really cooking this fish beautifully underneath. And it's gonna to get to that point where it cooks all the way through. And we're not worried about that. We want it to be like that. Pierre was getting very excited a second ago when he saw the board catching on fire. Mm -hmm. If it does catch on fire and starts I'm going... I'm on the right show, I love yeah. fire. <laughs> <laughs> if it does start getting a little bit fast and going a little bit out of control, take a little bit of water and just douse just gently the edge of the board just to slow it down. There's nothing wrong with that, it works just as well, okay? But we're still getting this beautiful... And you can feel that the fish is cooking. It's absolutely incredible. So we want something to go along with our trout, okay? Yes, so what we're going to use today are some spring cabbages. Now, I'm gonna cut this in half and I wanna make this a little bit more funky. I wanna make this a little bit more connected to the dish. So we're gonna stuff the cabbage in between the leaves and we're gonna push anchovy butter through it. Mm, now, sure anchovy, about that one? <laughs> now, anchovies people get a little bit, oh, ooh, no. Oh, no. No, but anchovies are incredible because they have this incredible <sighs> umami flavour okay. that really hits and makes the cabbage almost taste meaty. This is a da dish on its own. This you, is incredible. You have been known to change my mind almost every, in fact, every, every single, single time. time. So let's so I'm go with it. I mean, I, I, I would categorically say that I hate anchovies. However, this is good. I'm going to go with I this one. I put anchovy in um, when I cook lamb. Beautiful, yeah, yeah, you, really nice. You cut little holes it in the lamb and you stuff it with anchovy. It's a right? way of seasoning. And it, and it melts right. down. No. Trust uh, me. I'm, 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 I'm ready yeah. to try it. He's going for it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our pointed cabbage and I'm going to cut it in half. And then on your core here that we've got just sat here, I'm just going to not remove all of it, but remove a part of it, a majority of it. See, it's quite hard and it takes quite a long time to cook. This stuff is absolutely amazing. In the past, what I would do is I'd take um, little anchovies out of a jar or something like that, and puree them down. This is just pureed anchovy. It's fantastic. I've got some lemons that I'm gonna put on the grill, straight onto the perea. I've got some salted butter. Then I'm going to don some rubber gloves because we are outside. Darling. Darling. Do it to me. <laughs> Because we are outside and washing hands is at a premium because we're in the middle of nowhere. Thanks, Pierre. <laughs> well, it's my fault. Yeah. It was your idea. Was idea. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame him. <laughs> so, we have our rubber gloves. Lovely. Now what we can do is we can work with this and not worry. And this is dead simple, guys. Tablespoon of the anchovy paste in there. And then to that as well. Say what that looks like. That doesn't look great. All right. I'm and still, to that I'm as well. Gonna I'm gonna add some parsley. Yeah, just some roughly chopped doesn't parsley. Smell great either, frankly. <laughs> and the warmth from my hand, I'm gonna use to just bring this together and soften it up. Okay. Damien's not loving this. <laughs> he is really worried about the anchovies. David actually looks genuinely All together. worried. <laughs> it really does, yeah. And what I want to do is take nobules of this butter. Nobules. Nobules. Is that nobules. Word? I've just made that up. That's a great word. That's quite <laughs> that a lot of butter. That looks interesting. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to put that over the fire. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Then we turn it over. Once it's started to melt and start working its way in between. Okay. Give it a little kickstart. And then what we're going to do, what every good external outdoor chef should have, is grab a cast iron pan. <laughs> yeah. Got to have every a cast good iron pan. Camping kit. We've got a massive, heavy, huge cast, cast iron, iron pan. pan. Okay. Yeah, big I'm going to pop this on the side. And what I want to do is I want to almost create an oven with this. And the only one rule I'll say is that with the anchovy butter, the only thing that's better is more anchovy butter. <laughs> <laughs> So once we've got a little bit of char on these leaves, we're going to lift this over, pop them in there. Are you going to create an oven? What did you? What? I'm going to create. I'm going to put the rest of the anchovy butter in. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Get rid of me bowl. I'm going to take another old pan. I'm going to plonk it on the top. Very clever. Nice, nice, nice. nice. So this is okay. keeping that heat retained inside. My leg is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to leave that to do its thing now. And we want it, literally, 
we literally want that 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 cabbage as as it sat like a bowl what it's doing is it's catching all of that butter and it's almost confiting have you heard some confit before no so confit is a classic french term where you cook inside its own fat ah. so we're cooking in butter there we go. I knew the Frenchman yeah. would step up then. Yeah, yeah. And he wouldn't. He, he's reliable. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very reliable. <laughs> you did just say duck, though. He's got nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> so what no, we're going to do? It's a famous do. French dish, isn't it? Yeah. So what are we going to now do? I don't think I have. Eh? So it's, it's, it's duck. You basically cook it in, in in deep duck fat. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then you reuse your duck. You keep your duck fat, and the next batch you do again, mm. and, uh, and it gets better oh, and better and better. Better and better. Yeah. Cool. So I'm just going to. Got some in the freezer at home. Oh, good, good boy. Of, of course he has. <laughs> I've put the wrong glove wrong on the glove. wrong hand. Yeah. So I'm going to turn my fish around a little bit. Now you need to Do be you a bit turn careful. Them over or not? No, 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 no. They'll cook all the way through. Excuse me. Yep. Let's have a little look at our fish. So you don't actually flip the fish over. So if we were cooking in a Kamado style barbecue, you would leave this in itself, or a kettle, or something with a lid. A lid on a barbecue is essential. Obviously, when we're cooking in this style, we don't have a lid, so we have to. Compensate for that, right. as I say. If we slide the slice underneath this fish, just gently tip it up. Oh, that's flipping cooked perfect, mate. Look perfectly at that. cooked. But what I don't want to do, and I'll give oh. Pierre a little look here, what I don't want to do is turn it just yet. Oh, wow, yeah. I want to turn oh, it wow, last minute. So I'm going to turn it over just last minute. So when we serve it with our cabbage dressed over the top, it's going to be perfectly cooked. We've um, given the cabbage now probably about 15, 20 minutes, um, cooking within all those beautiful umami flavoured juices from the um, anchovies. anchovies. Um, the fish is looking <laughs> spot on. He's really worried about these anchovies. <laughs> what I did quickly do a minute ago is I put some lemons on and we've caramelised those because when you caramelise lemons, you get this amazing tarty sort of caramelised flavour out of them. Tarty. Let's take a... I'm going to take a quick look at the cabbage, see how that's getting on first. So it's looking, looking pretty good. good. Look at that foaming oh, butter. Christ, that smells amazing. Can you get that? <laughs> <laughs> and you're right, that smells meaty. So look, we get this lovely Doesn't it coffee. smell good? Yep. There we go. It doesn't smell that fishy one looks in a bit slightest. Better. Really good and it's starting to soften up. I want to leave a little bit of bite. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this caramelised lemon it's very fatty, this, and as it's cooking, add a little bit onto there, nestle Whoa. that down. And that's giving that sort of French-style bernoisette sauce, sort because of, we've got foaming butter, lemon juice, and we're going to leave that, and you can smell that straight away, can't Amazing, you? Amazing, yeah, yeah, really smells good. But while that's just finishing off, what we want to do is we want to flip over our fish. Flip the fish, flip the fish, flip, flip, flip the fish. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. <laughs> Are you any good at singing? Flip that fish, baby. Consider the fish flipped. flipped. <laughs> there we go, there we go. These are cooked beautifully. That yeah, that looks amazing. spectacular. Looks a bit good, doesn't that it? Looks that very, deal. Yeah, very good. Look at, look that. at that. Perfectly cooked. Nicely cooked. There we go, brilliant. And again, we just now have to wait a little bit. We're going to lift that log. Fire lift up that a little log, bit. Off. Lift that log. <laughs> Can we ban him from singing on these episodes? I think we should. Really <laughs> should. You've got a lot of talents, Damien, but singing is not one of them. There we go. So we're ramping up that heat now. And again, we're just going to wait a little bit of time. And we're going to listen to another encore from Damien's great yeah. repertoire of music. <laughs> Did you know that he used to live with Prince? Did he used to sing with Prince? <laughs> oh. oh. Subject to NDA, baby. Should we leave that one for another episode? Save that one for another episode. Yeah. Okay, so... These guys will laugh at this, but I always cook to temperature. Not time. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when cooking fish... Although, to be fair, Ross, without a thermometer, I can tell that that's cooked. It is cooked, but it's nice to double check, isn't it? There are yeah. people that aren't confident in themselves and will cook it further and further and further. What so, is about? Because you said, mate, if you overcook it, you're screwed. You're screwed, yeah, yeah, you really are. Because fish, when it overcooks, yeah. it goes tight, the proteins tighten up. It's, yeah. it's an unpleasant eating experience. So we want to yeah. make sure that we've got a temperature that we're... Bob on with. Well, Do you know let's what I hope mean? we haven't overcooked it then, lads. <laughs> well, I actually haven't checked this as well, <laughs> exactly. so I'm slightly concerned. Look at that, so we're 45, 45 there. So it's not quite there higher. yet. 52 at this end, though. Remember you're taking an average reading across the way. Yeah, yeah. 48 there, spot on. Look at that. Uh, okay. 
coming in this one, 50, a bit higher. That fish is now ready. Our cabbage is getting there, and we're pretty much ready to serve up now. Awesome. Great. Hungry? Yeah. yeah. Baby, hungry? Baby, hungry, yeah. hungry. Let's go for it. Okay. Yumton, mate. Yumton Abbey. <laughs> Done it. Yumton Abbey. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Anchovy cabbage, huh? First time. That's sweet, juicy, not even remotely fishy. Enjoy Absolutely it? delicious. Cast them off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? Mm, not really good. Yeah? yeah? So you don't get that fishy flavour. Yeah, Do you see? So that's would amazing. you now season with anchovy Big based? time. Every, 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 every cornflakes, we Wheatabix, everything. Anchovies on everything from now on. Can I taste it? Yeah, of course you can. Do you want to grab some? I thought I was going in the same fork. Look. Oh, that's... Wow, yeah. Mm, Isn't it? <laughs> really surprising flavour, that one. Mm -hmm. It's Isn't different, it? yeah? Nicely onto the cabbage. Oh, I see, so you made a little bed of cabbage oh, there. Yeah, you see. Get rid of the board. Can't really use it again. There's some more cabbage down the centre of this fish. There's a little bit down there. Flipping heck, dude. That looks amazing. Flipping heck. Has he done it again? I think he might have done it. Has he done it again? <laughs> right. <laughs> Chuck's a fork. Has he done it again, lad? Well, I don't know. You haven't oh traced it yet. Oh, my God. But what you'll notice and you'll see is if you pull this skin back, this fish yeah. looks just beautifully good. Yeah, yeah. Look beautifully good. Oh, look at that. Pull it away from the bones. Right. Have a bit of that on his own. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. Need a little touch of salt. Yeah, yummy. Mm. Oh, you can taste the dill. Yeah. Wow. Love that. Love that. Really comes through, yeah? Yeah, that's amazing. Again, boys. Super sexy, super sexy. I'll have that with a bit of the cabbage. Bit of the cabbage in time. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that seasoning there was much better. Big time. Mm. You've done it, Rossi. You've done it again, baby. Yet again. I think the point to take from a dish like this, yeah, look, it isn't pretty. It's not, it's, it, it, it's not beautiful food, but it's tasty food, and it's about flavour, and that's what we're looking for. Mm. Bringing in the fire, bringing in that burnt lemon, bringing the anchovy butter, all those simple ingredients that create a standout tasty dish, which really does give you that sense of wow when you eat it. Where if it can convert him, wow. <laughs> it's so moist. It's perfectly cooked. The cabbage is my favourite bit. And you can pick up the tones of the Bonk. cedar. So from that cedar wood, you just pick up a little bit. Just coming under home. You're going to have to stop doubting Ross. You keep doing it. Yeah, no, well, you're absolutely right. Well, that looks a bit crazy. Too much for me. Okay, guys. That's another episode done. So if you've liked what you've seen, remember to like, share, subscribe. Um, hit the little notification button. Button? Butter? Butter. Butter's on the brain. Hit the little notification button. And um, we'll see you next time on Fire Feast and Friends. See God you damn next time. Right. Cheers, guys. Right, that's a bit more of this fish. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure, man. My favourite bit is the cabbage. I can't believe it. The anchovy cabbage.